and I'm, and I'm going, going to touch a few of them. them. Number, Number one, one there's, there's a picture, picture on the far right, right a queue there. there. This, this is, is what, what we are faced with every Thursday. Thursday. We, we provide, provide food for more than 200 people every Thursday. Thursday. And, that and that is, is our, our response to what, what I read, read earlier on. on. Every, every Thursday, Thursday we, we provide food to thousands of, uh, sorry, to 200 people. And, and that's, that's, it is the support that we get from you. You look at the pictures, that is our food bank. And as I'm speaking to you now, we are running low on stock. The next slide, we have projects that we have started in this church in the last two months. We have a bakery, well-equipped, world-class bakery. Sorry, the pictures are not showing nice. We'll fix it in the second service. We have a sewing school that will be launched soon. And on the far left, you have a mobile kitchen that we have just purchased. All these projects amount to more than 800,000 800, rand. And lastly, when we talk about leadership, when we talk about businesses that are struggling in the church or in the country, you know the church is big when it comes to empowering businesses in the church. You know that we are big when it comes to leadership programs. And lastly, when on the picture on the far right, on the far left, we've just launched Hope Business Connect. This is a platform where you and I are going to trade. This is a platform where businesses are being empowered. Now I'm standing here, but I want to then say, play your part. Play your part in this season where we are expected to be in the forefront of all the challenges that our country is facing. As you give this morning, go deep in your pocket. It's a battle out there and we are in the forefront of this battle. Let us give understanding that your giving is transforming lives out there in the country. Hallelujah. We have many ways of giving in the house of the Lord. We have SnapScan, we have our banking details, and the bucket will be, you know, circulating around. Give your best this morning because we are not a church that does church within the, the church walls. We are out there in the marketplace. May the good God bless you as we give this morning. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the vision, oh Father. We thank you, Mudimuaka, that you gave this vision unto the visionaries. We come before you as vision bearers, oh Father. For it is, Mudimuaka, us who will be able to anchor this vision, oh Father. Mudimuaka, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory this morning. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Let's look at the screens for, for announcements. Hallelujah. Remember, you can use one of our many secure platforms to give. Go on to our HRM app, click on the campus you're from, and find the EFT details at the bottom. Alternatively, you can use SnapScan. Download it onto your mobile device, fill in your details as well as the amount. You can also scan the QR code appearing on the screen right now. Thank you for partnering with Hope Restoration Ministries in expanding God's kingdom, and God bless you. Greetings, beloved. We thank God that you're able to join us both online and in person. My name is Ndando Shabalala, and here are your HRM news. To all our elderly fathers and mothers, the church will be hosting an elderly service at Timbisa campus on the 3rd of May 2023, starting at 8.30 p.m. There will be an health screening before the service starts. If you're longing for an extended and intimate time in praise and worship, Rev. SC and Pastor P.A. Matebula invite everyone to the worship feast next week, Sunday, the 7th of May, 2023, at the Glorigop campus, starting at 6 p.m. See you there. Married couples, this one is for you. The church will be hosting a couples retreat from the 5th to the 7th of May, 2023, at Hope Camp in Mahalisburg. The camp will include mountaintop picnics, trust walk, and many more fun bonding activities. For more information, please contact Bunene on family at hrm.org.za or call 011-976-0600. Ladies, Pastor P.A. Matibula is inviting all ladies to our victorious night, taking place on the 12th of May, 2023, at the Chloricope campus, starting at 6 p.m. The theme is, Together We Can, and the dress code is 
jeans and the coats. Brev SC and Pastor PA Matebula would like to congratulate our Runners of Hope member Comfort Silibi for her outstanding performance during the 20 Ultra Marathon by obtaining first position in her category. Titi Halala Comfort. I am Dando Shabalala signing out from your HRM News. Stay connected to the source of your faith. Enjoy the service. right there. Wow, Ntando Shabalalo. Well done, my boy. Well done. You, you, you are amazing. That is the voice right there. The teenager has done well. Yeah, hallelujah. Well, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Are you good this morning? want to welcome those of you who are joining us online. We know it is many of you. I just check. Many of you are joining us online because you have taken an Long weekend, I hope you are giving right there. Hallelujah. Your giving is also appreciated. Are you good this morning, beloved? Are you good this morning? Good morning. Hey, man, we have missed you, man. When was the last time I stood here? I think three, long, huh? three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Praise the name. Come on. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You know, sometimes it's so good to, to take a rest and so that you can refresh, come back fresh, and, um, and be able to serve the people. I always say to business people, if you're a businessman and uh, you can't take a break, you can't take a day off, you don't have a business. You are a business. So you must be able to, to take a break and things must operate in your absence. But if your business cannot operate in your absence, that means you have not started, you know, running a business. So I pray that may the good God grace all of you to a point that you are able to leave things and take a break and be able to rest while things run by themselves. Hallelujah. Great leaders, they do exactly that. Things must never be stagnant just because you are not around. Hallelujah. Are you good this morning? And uh, I know you have enjoyed the theme, Die to Live. And it's my final uh, 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 sermon on that topic, Die to Live. And then we've been laboring on that. And all the speakers who stood here and minister, and they've done a wonderful work on that, on that theme. But this morning, allow me to talk to you under this topic, a self-disciplined life. A self-disciplined life. This someone I need to say, it was inspired by a discussion that I had with a group of young pastors who are passionate about serving God. And one of them said to me, Sir, I want to sow a seed in your life to tap into your favor and your success. Okay? This is what he said. And as Christians, you know that this is a common practice among Christians, especially the Charismatics and the Pentecostal. You know, when you see somebody doing well and when you see somebody favored, we love to tap into their anointing and we love and saying, I just want to give a gift so that and then I can have what you have. Somewhere, somehow we we, we are actually missing a point. Unfortunately, this practice compromises the entire truth regarding success. Okay? Listen to me, child of God. Anytime you see a person who is doing anything exceptional, it's not only because of the favor or the grace of God upon them. It is very simple to say, I just want to tap into that favor. I just want to tap into that grace. There's nothing wrong, but it is very important that we, we, we tell you that there is something, you know, that they are doing over and above the grace bestowed on them. It's not that they are just grace and they are just blessed. And now we just want to 
just step into those things. The truth is God gives grace to all men. He also, he is not selective with his grace. All of us, we have the grace of God. I love what Mensa Otabil said one day. This is what he said, Mensa. He said, being grace is an investment of God in you. Being disciplined is your investment in yourself. It is not true that you can just step into my grace and my favor by just giving an offering. This thing goes beyond that, goes beyond tapping into the grace and the favor. There is also a disciplined life in what you see this morning before you. You might look at me and say, this man is blessed by God. This man is graced by God. The question is, uh, aren't you graced by God? Aren't you blessed by God? All of us, we are blessed. All of us, we are graced by God. The truth is beyond grace and the blessings of God. What extra things are you implementing in your life? I'm saying to you, before you celebrate and desire what other people have in life, find out the price that they've paid behind the scenes. Because nobody just appears and be successful. And you just want to buy that with 100 rent so that it can be deposited in you. There is much behind the scenes that these people have done. And on Otter Bill have put that together in a beautiful way. He said, being graced is an investment of God in you. But being disciplined is your investment in yourself. A good example will be Usain Bolt, the man that we all know, Usain Bolt. We are told, if you can put that screen, please. He ran and won nine gold medals in less than two minutes. Are you aware that all those nine medals that he won, you can calculate all the time, he actually won those nine medals in less than two minutes. Less than two minutes. Now, Let's look at what happened in Beijing. That was in 2008, okay? And then when he ran 100 meters, he ran that by 9.69 seconds. 200 meters, 19.3. Four by 100 meters, that was a relay. It is 8.98. This is what happened in 2008. And then in London in 2012, this is the time that he ran. 9.6 Three, he was more faster. And um, the 200, it was 19.3, 19.32 seconds. And relay, he was more faster as well. And then it was 8.7, okay? This man was very fast. And then in 2016, when he appeared for the third time, he ran 100 meters, he was getting slower, but he was still faster to other people. It was 9.81 and uh, the 200, it was 19.7, uh, 19.76. And the other one, the relay, it was uh, a nine second. And I have put that minus there because remember, they took that medal because one of the guys, he was found that he had taken some drugs in the relay. So they disqualified them. But when you calculate all this, he ran and won those medals less than two minutes. Now, somebody might come in and say, you say, I want to tap. <laughs> I want to tap into your anointing. I, I, I want to tap into your anointing. Everybody would love this. Because we don't look at the work behind the scenes. He won this in less than two minutes. But here is the truth. Or should I say, it is true that you know, he was grace or he is grace and blessed with long legs. That is the fact. Okay? But his success came through hard work and discipline. Here are some of the things that they don't tell you about. It was 18 years of hard work. He started training at the age of 12. Trained 
three to four hours a day. Four to five times a week. At the age of 30, this is what we see about him. You said bold. Nethwood was $44.2 million. Besides the $10 million from Puma yearly. So you might look at him and say, I want to tap into that. But there's a lot of work behind the scenes. People, that is what they don't want to do. They just want the final results. I want this. I want that. I want that. No, 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 no. Smart people, they say, what is it that you have done to achieve what you have achieved? Reveal unto me what is it that you have done behind the scene to be a successful businessman, a successful businesswoman. We are talking about a self-disciplined life. When you see somebody with an exceptional life, people who are successful in any area of their lives, you would realize that they implemented or they've exercised self-discipline. This is what they've put in their lives. You are here this morning, you are saying, Pastor Matebula, I want to be successful. Pastor Matebula, I want to be honored. I want to be exceptional. I want to tell you that the scripture has a solution for that. And the scripture wants us to be exceptional. And the scripture wants us to be self-disciplined so that we can achieve great things in life. Paul speaks to the church of Corinth in chapter 9 in the first book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. Would you please turn with me in that scripture as we labor together under that topic, a self-disciplined life. Praise the name of Jesus. I need to say to you, this is not one of those sermons that makes people to be excited. People, they don't want to hear the word discipline. Am I right, Pastor Luan? We don't want the, uh, to hear the word discipline. Because we're so, they discipline us when we're young. So the moment you hear the word discipline, it's a stress. But listen what he says in verse 24. He says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? He goes on, he says, run in such a way as to get the prize. I love that. He says, everybody run, but you must run in such a way to get the prize. Verse 25 says, everyone who competes in the games goes into what, Bazalwane? Read with me. He goes into what? Strict training. And he says, they do it to get a crown that will not last, these people. You know, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, verse 26, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. Hallelujah. He says, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. He says, no, I strike a blow, not to people. I strike a blow to who, Bazalwane? To my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. A self-disciplined life right there. He says, I beat my body. I beat my body. I make it a slave so that I can qualify, so that I can win the prize. You don't just win from nowhere. There are things that you must implement. There are things that you must train so that you become that successful person. Nico Anabazalwan. You sound so serious this morning. This is this serious stuff? Hallelujah. Come and give God praise. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I love it when you read it with a, a message translation. Actually, when you read it with a tra message translation, it's like you can just read it and say, you know, let's go home. Listen what it says. It says, you've all been to the stadium, and it's a fact. <laughs> and you've seen the athletes race. Everyone runs. One wins. And he says, run to what, Bazalwane? To win. And he goes on, he says, all good athletes train what? Hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You are after one that's gold eternally. I love that. The one that you are after, Wena, is gold eternally. He says in verse 26, I don't know about you, but I am running hard 
for the finish line. I am giving it everything I've got. No lazy living for me. I am staying alert and in top of condition. I am not going to get caught in napping. Telling everyone else all about it and then missing out myself. What a beautiful scripture. To the preachers, already you've got some points right there. When you preach about discipline, you've got few points. I'm giving it everything. You tell people you must give it, you must give your all. He says, running hard to finish the line. And he says, no lazy living for me. Okay? He says, I'm staying alert in top condition. Praise the name. You can tell that this guy, he says, I must be in top condition. I must be fit. Praise the name of Jesus. And he goes on. He says, no lazy living. No lazy living. I'm not going to get caught napping. You know, sometimes we get caught napping. And we end up losing what we're supposed to have. You know, Maggie, the more you sleep a little bit, the more poverty comes your way. Hallelujah. Because we love sleeping. How I wish I can ask you, how many hours do you sleep? 12 hours. And you want to be successful. You want to be great. So when you look at that word self-discipline, it simply means to exercise power over self. You exercise power over self. It is not somebody who's exercising power over you. And this is one of the qualities that we are lacking as the children of God. You must be able to exercise power over yourself. And not only that, self-discipline also means the ability to keep self under control. You must be able to keep yourself under control. You know, if you can keep yourself under control, let me tell you, Barcelona, many marriages will be flourishing today if we can keep ourselves under control because you are able, you know, to discipline yourself and say, I, I'm not going to say this. When somebody, you know, is so angry or tempered, you know, what do you do? You are able to put yourself under control and say, I'm not going to be able to do this. A life of discipline, let me tell you, beloved, it will give us a good life in our marriages in our relationships at church wherever we are at work because you are able to put yourself under control the problem why we've got many complications in life is that even in the church you've got people you are leading people who cannot control themselves the scripture says ah, 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 I discipline my body I don't do life as if I'm just fighting the air. I am punishing myself. I, I discipline myself. And say, I cannot speak like this as a child of God. You don't just say words and after that you regret. But you are able to cause yourself. Benfunantin. Look at the person next to you and say, Cause yourself, please. <laughs> Self mastery over one's inner desires, thoughts, actions, and words. That word, self discipline, means you are able to master your desires. You master your thoughts. You master your actions. You master your words. Some of you, you think. When you said, yes, Jesus, because I'm a pastor, it's like the Holy Spirit comes and takes all away the desires. He kills the flesh. You think you are the only one who sees beautiful women. You think you are the only one, you know, and then who sees, hey, not a one. It is worse with us, people like us, handsome guys like us. You know, people, they just throw themselves. They, 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 just, they just avail themselves to you. They just avail themselves. We are born now. We are born in Pele. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But it takes discipline. It takes discipline to say no. It takes discipline to say no. Self-discipline and say no. I'm a married man. I'm a husband to one wife. I'm a father to five children. You discipline. There's no one watching. But it's a self discipline. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Nukona, is that a good word, Bazalwan? Is that a good word? Some of you, your success will begin to happen the, the moment you begin to discipline yourself. The moment you exercise self-discipline, you'll be amazed the things that you can achieve in life. Now, quickly, quickly, quickly in the next few minutes, how to live a life of self-discipline? How to live a life of self-discipline? Are you ready for that? Number one, you need to pursue the main thing. You need to pursue the main thing. You see, you will never live a life of self-discipline if you are pursuing many things. You need to decide what is the main thing in your life. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and, and the righteousness and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What is your main thing? What is the main thing in your life? You need to be able to pursue that, the main thing. When you look at that word to pursue, it simply means to run after a task regardless of obstacles or challenges. You know that this is the main thing. You know that this is what God wants me to achieve and I will make sure that I run after it. The Bible says everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. What is your main thing? The runners, they run because they want to achieve. They want to win that gold. They want to win that medal. But Zalwane, if you are going to live a self-disciplined life, you must have that one thing in mind. One thing. You know, I want to finish strong in life. I want one day when I step into heaven, the Lord himself might say, faithful servant. Well done, faithful servant. Well done. I want to make sure that on that day when I'm, I'm, I'm gone, the community will say, what a man. What a man. What a servant. Praise the name of Jesus. But those things will never happen if you don't exercise self-discipline. Now, Dr. Mensah Otabila has been getting his lot of material this week. He says these words, if you believe you are going, or if you believe where you are going is far, you must load deep. So, did you hear that, Mr. Lord? If you believe where you are going is far, you must load deep. Many people, they believe that they are going far. But their loading is shallow. You want to go far. But you don't exercise self-discipline. If you want to go far, Bazalwan, make sure you load deep. That is why where I am now, I cannot hide the code of my phone from my wife. She must have an access of my phone anytime. It is another way of loading deep. I want her, you know, and then to, to hold me accountable. Because I want to go far. I've got a lot of responsibility. Here you are, you want to go far, but you are still hiding things. When the phone rings, you are jumping like a goalkeeper. Boom. You don't want somebody to hold your phone. Look at the pastor next to you and say, the pastor is talking to you now. The pastor is talking to you. You don't want anybody to touch your phone. They know, even my boys, they know they can access my phone anytime. They can visit the pages that I have actually visited without any problem. But when? Wena. Look at the person next to you and say, Wena. <laughs> Look at the other one and say, Wena. <laughs> Are you good this morning? Amen. How to live a life of self-discipline. Number one, I said, pursue the main thing. And then number two, purpose in your heart. Purpose in your heart. You remember when you, you read Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, it says, Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. With the food that was offered by the king. You need to purpose in your heart. You need to purpose an intention or a reason for doing something or for allowing something to happen. Purpose in your heart. Why should I allow this? Why should I allow this? I am not going to do this for this reason. The problem
problem is that we, we remove the reasons, you know, in the area of doing things. Why are you doing what you are doing? Why are you allowing this person? Why? You must purpose in your heart. There's a quote that I love there. There's a quote. It says, the first and best victory is to conquer yourself. The first and the best victory is to do what Bazalwane is to conquer yourself. That is why the scripture says, therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave. If you don't discipline your body, your body will put you in a mess. You must make your body a slave. This flesh does not get satisfied. It does not get satisfied. It wants more. God has given you a beautiful wife, but this body still says, sure, did you see that one? Did you see that one? It will never get satisfied. There's a man you know in this country, he had five wives. But he was still caught in other areas with other women. And you ask yourself and say, but this is unfair, man. Tina Sina one, we don't have five. <laughs> but you, you still want more. You've got five and you still want more. And some of us is just one. And for 25 years, one. That is how the devil operates. That is how the devil operates. He says, really? You want to say for the rest of your life? You're just going to know only one woman? Aren't you depriving yourself? That is how the devil plays this game. And sometimes if you are this Shangani boy with the ego and say, Ndava Lunges. Amen, Shangani. Ela, self-discipline. If you want to achieve great things in life, you must be able to say no to other things. You must be able to say no. It's a self-discipline. Praise the name of We are not even doing it because we are being influenced by other people. You know, it's something that you exercise and say, I'm disciplining myself. I'm going somewhere. You know, I've got this purpose. There are things that I want to achieve in life. My time, my time. Number three, number three, how to live a self-disciplined life. You persevere till the end. You persevere, that is the third P. You, you persevere till the end. To persevere simply means having the guards of continuing in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. But you know what? You continue to persevere. In spite of all these challenges, you keep on pushing on. You keep on pushing on. The Bible says, no lazy living for me. I am staying alert and in top condition. You stay in top condition. Challenges are there, but you're saying, I know. Listen to this statement. Perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. Did you hear what I said? I said, perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. You are so tired, you are so exhausted, but you know what you do? You keep on doing it. You keep on going on. The flesh tells you, no, yeah, you cannot, but you keep on doing it. Everybody's doing it outside. You say, no, 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 no. I'm going to stick into this. I will persevere. Yes, it takes time. Yes, it is not easy, but I'll keep on pushing. I'll keep on going on. Yes, the results are not visible, but but I know that at the end of the tunnel there is a light. I might be in darkness now, but I keep on pushing. I keep on pushing. Other people, they got their breakthrough. It does not bother me. I know that my prize is coming. I keep on running. I keep on pushing. Yes, other people are discouraging me, but you know what I do? I keep on running. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? And number four, process everything. If you want to live a life of discipline, you must be able to process everything or ideas. Process. Learn to process things. Don't just jump into things. The word process simply means a series of actions, changes of function bringing about a result. Process things. If I get into these things, what's going to happen tomorrow? We don't want to think. The problem why we find ourselves in, in many problems is that we don't want to think. 
you know, I think it was Benjamin Franklin. He said, he, uh, he that cannot obey cannot command. I love that. He that cannot obey cannot command. It is very important to process things. Sit there. Obey. So that when it is your time to command, you have processed things and you know the outcome of that thing and you begin to command. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me give you quickly the benefits of self-discipline. The benefit of self-discipline in the next two minutes. Are you good? Are you good? Nikona? Nikona Labi Makaya? I will forget to increase your those hearts in the book Facebook and say, Sikona, put that, put that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Here are the benefits. Number one, your life gets structured when you're self disciplined. Your life gets structured when you're self disciplined. You have a structure. You want me to give you a verse to show you when you don't have a discipline, what happens? Listen what the verse says. This is the verse. It says in Proverbs 25, verse 28, a person without self-control or self-discipline is like a city with broken down walls. Do you see that? Do you see that? A person without self-control or self-discipline, the Bible says you are like a city with broken down walls. You don't have a structure. If you are not disciplined, anybody can come and invade your land. Anybody can come. That is why you find those, the, 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 those men, you know, and then they, they pray after these young girls because you don't have a structure. And you find those girls as well, you know, and then it's an old man who comes and proposes, a young man, you know, tall, short, but because you don't have a structure. Look at the person and say, Kandu Babu Njando. You don't have a structure. You don't have a structure, but when your life is structured, when you are disciplined, you've got a structure. Even when this vulnerable girl comes to you, because you've got a structure, you are structured, you are able to bless them without taking advantage of them. You give them, you sponsor them without taking advantage of them. Because they are used to people who are giving them money and they must give them something in return. But when you are self-disciplined, you bless them and you say, may the good God do you good. And say, what type of a man is this who can just give me so much and not ask me anything in return? It is because you are living a life of self-discipline. You have a structure. But if you are not self-disciplined, the Bible says you are like a city with broken walls. An enemy can come in any time. An enemy can come into that city any time and invade that city because you are not self-disciplined. Number two, number two. And uh, the benefit of self-discipline. You are at your own command when you are self-disciplined. You are at your own command. Do you hear what I said? Let me give you a, a verse there. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 7. It says, ants have no commander, no leader or ruler, but they store up food in the summer and gather their supplies at harvest. Because you are living a life of self-control. You become your own commander. When you are living a life of self-control, Bazalwan, let me tell you, you you're going to have a wonderful time with your boss at work because you don't need anybody to remind you of time. You don't need anybody to remind you of time management. You, are, you have a structure and you are a commander of yourself. You are self-disciplined. When they say, come to work at 7 o'clock, go right to 7, you are there. Or half past 6, you are there. You have become a commander of your life. Many people, they struggle with time even on Sunday because you don't have 
a structure. You are not disciplined. You, you wake up in the morning, even in your house, you are searching for the socks, you are searching for the underwear. Hey, underwear, you know, and all you are looking for things because you are not structured. Look at your room. Look at your room. You know, things are not in order. You keep on searching. You don't even know where's your Bible. You don't even know where are the things you don't have. You, every day you are searching for a key. Where is my car keys? Where? Yeah, nah. But if you are disciplined, you know that the keys must be here. You know that your Bible must be here. You know that whatever must be here. You live a life of a structure and you become a blessing. And you'll be a good employee. Number three, you make better choices when you are self-disciplined. Your standard of living rises. Number four, you manage time effectively when you are self-disciplined. Number six, you become more healthier and productive when you are self-disciplined. Your relationships improves when you are self-disciplined. Did you got all those points? Can I start number one? Your life gets structured. Number two, you are at your own command. Number three, you make better choices. Number four, your standard of living rises. Are you with me? That is number four. Number five, you manage time effectively. Number six, you become more healthier and productive. Say no to Maguinya. When Fuan Jalo, I don't regular Maguinya mo. The moment the weather is like cold, I don't regular Maguinya. Maguinya, Maguinya, look at you. Stop Maguinya. You don't need prayer. Some of you, you don't need a prayer. You just have to stop eating too much Maguinya and drink a lot of water, and you'll be healed in Jesus' name. And the final one, your relationships improves. When you are structured and when you are disciplined, you'll be amazed what's going to happen with your relationships. Was that a good word? Come and stand on your feet this morning. I hope at home you have enjoyed that one. Self-discipline. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is real. We thank you that you are God and there is no one. Thank you for speaking to us in such a beautiful way. Thank you, oh God, for challenging our lives this morning. In the name of Jesus, in the name that it's above all other names. Wanna pray for you at home? Play softly, please. Play softly. Wanna pray for you at home in the name of Jesus. You are saying, Pastor Matebula, I'm struggling with self-discipline. I'm struggling, you know, in the area of structure in my life. My life does not have a structure. I want to pray for you wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. In the name that it's above all other names. May the good God do you good. May the spirit of God cover you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And to all of us, would you please pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you today. Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Be a Lord and the Savior of my life. Devil, from today, you will never, ever rule my life. My life belongs to Jesus. Jesus alone. Thank you, Father, for saving me. As from today, Holy Spirit, help me to live a disciplined life, a disciplined life to your glory so that the world can see that I am your servant and I'm your disciple. In the name of Jesus, help me, Lord, where I'm struggling with self-discipline. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, come on, give God praise. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Do you receive it this morning? Do you receive it this morning? Now, to our visitors, to our visitors, we're just going to allow our visitors, if you are visiting us for the first time, would you please right now, just before we leave, and then just follow that lady there with the board. We just want to take care of you, please. Allow our visitors, especially as they go out. Our visitors, come, come, come. Go, 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 go. Those who are coming here for the first time, we're waiting for you. There's a board there. Go, go quickly, go quickly. 
Go quickly, go quickly in the name of Jesus. And to the rest of you, may the good God do you good. May the good God favor you. God bless you. And if you are here, maybe you need a prayer. You need a prayer. Praise the name. Come and encourage the visitors. They go. Go there. Go there. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. In the name of Jesus, we just want to serve you nicely. And if you are here, you are in need of prayer, you can remain behind. Our leaders and our pastors would love to pray for you. And thank you for coming. God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed Sunday. We love you. God bless you.